November is Diabetes Awareness Month, and with African Americans, 13% more likely to be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. It is imperative, of course, that we discuss methods to retreat and possibly reverse type 2 diabetes. There are experts from both the medical world and the fitness world that have seen a reversal in type 2 diabetes in patients. Joining us in the studio to talk about this is a medical standpoint, Dr. Wanda Dyson, uh, an area doctor here, and also Tramel Smith as uh, a trainer out of Atlanta. He is, of course, a fitness expert as well. All right, so Doc, first and foremost, so explain this, this diabetes reversal, because for so many years we've heard once you get it, that's it. Well, not necessarily. Type 2 diabetes is permanently reversible if we make permanent lifetime, lifestyle changes. Okay, so first of all, how many diabetes are there? There's type 1 diabetes, which the pancreas doesn't produce insulin all, at all, and there's type 2 diabetes where the insulin is produced, but it doesn't work properly to drive the glucose inside the cells. And are folks more likely to get type 1 or type 2? They're more likely to get type 2 diabetes. Okay, we also have, okay, we also have juvenile diabetes, right? So basically, they're, they're typically three forms we talk about. Usually we're talking about juvenile diabetes, we're talking about type 1. Okay, got it. All right, so type 1 and type 2. Yes. So we talk about reversal, that's, large, that's with type 2, not with type 1. Yes. Okay. That's type two. All right, so, so let's say somebody is diagnosed with type two diabetes. Okay, all right, and they are, I think Sherry Shepard talked about this uh, when she said that she, um, I think one time when she tweeted, she says, I don't longer take my diabetes medicine. Uh, and she dropped a lot of weight, changed her diet, and also fitness. Is that what we're talking about when we say, when we say reversal? Yes, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about permanent lifestyle changes and the emphasis is on permanent. For over 20 years I've been doing this in my practice and I find it easier to tell people what to eat rather than what to avoid. So I give them a food list which includes protein requirements for weight, low glycemic fruits and vegetables which don't raise the blood sugar as much, okay, hold and up. good so fats. Let's start right there. So what, what is a low glycemic fruit? Give me the actual fruit, because I already know what low glycemic is. <laughs> it's all Googleable, but <laughs> apples, pears, cherries, things of that nature, and the vegetables are mainly green vegetables. We think of broccoli, kale, dandelion greens, romaine, etc. So we hear bananas, but bananas are also sweet. So you're not Bananas eat. don't really make the list. Okay, don't make the list. And I don't agree with the American diabetic diet at all. I've been doing this for over 20 years in my practice and the patients that follow my advice don't need medications for type 2 diabetes. So, so no insulin shots, no pills? If they, keyword, follow. If they follow my advice, they don't need it. Uh, and, uh, and how many folks are we talking about? I mean, that, that, that you treated, uh, that, that you have been able to get them to, once they listen, to reverse. That's, that's key. Hundreds and thousands. I've been in practice for nearly 30 years, and initially I practiced in the medically underserved areas of Washington, D.C., which I found was the toughest group. I had to actually bring people in to educate them on nutrition and show them actually how to prepare food that was healthier for them. Uh, Tramel, let's go to you. Uh, obviously, fitness uh, plays a, p a part in this as well. Uh, and so uh, what role do you see? What's your um, job in all of this? Uh, first of all, I agree with uh, Dr. 100%. Um, the nutrition is, is going to be the first key to getting uh, diabetes in control and reversing it. Um, I'm a huge proponent of adding fat to the diet as well as um, the low glycemic fruits and vegetables and um, high fiber as well. But my role as a personal trainer is to provide um, more, uh, more muscle, uh, more, more cardiovascular health to my clients because um, the inclusion of uh, muscle and the loss of fat um, definitely helps the body become more um, insulin sensitive and uh, better control glucose. Uh, and so what are you recommending in terms of, terms of exercise? Uh, are you, uh, is it every day? Is it three, four times a week? Um, exactly what? I recommend at least four days a week. Um, and I also like a combination of both cardio and resistance training. Um, it has been proven to show you get better results with uh, the inclusion of both of those um, and not just one or the other. Um, Doc, uh, sleep plays a big part of this. Explain why. 
Yes, African Americans tend to be short sleepers, and by short sleepers, I mean we sleep less than six hours. When we don't get enough... Six hours? Yeah. Man, that's a long time. <laughs> What's somebody who averages about four, four and a half? Uh. Not good, not good. So when we sleep less, the decision-making part of our brains don't work as well, which causes us to make poor food choices. We will tend to eat pizza, donuts, burgers, and drinks, sh very sugary-laden drinks. Well, some of us eat, eat all that if we just sleep <laughs> eight, ten hours. Right. Um, and, uh, but also explain, though, how sleep helps you process, I mean, how it helps your body process what you do eat when you're eating the good stuff. Well, it's necessary for processing sugar. So if we sleep only four and a half to six hours, our Glucose is not under control. We don't process sugar as well. Question? Well, as a, I guess, the resident diabetic here on the panel, tight one. Um, I agree with you. Yeah, normally they're running your mouth. Oh, it's yeah. a regular young person. <laughs> yeah, come on. Look, I agree with your diet. Uh, my uh, endocrinologist uh, told me something. <coughs> from my mother. Um, you, know, you get, now you got diagnosed what age? Uh, 20, I was two weeks away from 27. Well, 26, wow. yeah. This last year. He been eating real bad for a long time. But we made some made some good made well, some good adjustments. Type one diabetes yeah. is different. It's my, not that's my dad's also type one diabetic. Diet. Yeah. But he been eating real bad. He's gonna eat me bad. Don't eat problem. Don't try to blame it on me. <laughs> well, my dad's also a type one diabetic. He had juvenile diabetes at 13. Uh, but my endocrinologist told me, you know, something very, you know, very similar. Um, you know, heavy on meats. You know, uh, not so heavy on carbs. Um, when it comes to the fruits, uh, try to stick with your less juicier fruits. It's like they have more sugar, um, you know, the, I guess more solid fruit, no, less sugar. So I agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> many endocrinologists send their patients to me because they don't understand how they get their diet under control. Hmm. Yeah. How long does it take to see a change after the dietary change? Probably within six to, to eight weeks. Yeah. Usually. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I had a friend who was diagnosed with diabetes and her blood sugar was like 900. She was hospitalized. Wow. They automatically put her on insulin and medications. And she lived in South Carolina. Right. So she just drove to DC. I told her what to do. She didn't require any medications and her diabetes has been under control ever since. Sh Tremaine, I want to go to you. Um, is it also important uh, to mix in different types? I mean, some people, of course, get bored to death just walking on a treadmill or an elliptical. And so uh, if you're saying do it four times a week, um, what are you telling folks to do to mix it up? Um, I like to suggest maybe two days of resistance training where we're actually lifting weights, um, doing, you know, things like lunges and squats and, and things that nature pulls, push. Um, and then the other days I also like to recommend that we do cardio, whether it's running, walking, jogging, swimming, biking, whatever that a, a person can do that's going to be safe for their joints and that they can fit into their schedule. But um, definitely the combination of both cardio training and resistance training uh, has shown to to do the most in terms of combating diabetes. Malik, final question. So uh, I think uh, Tremel, I, I think with his plan, I'm, I'm on track because I just played in my uh, high school alumni game. That was wind resistance training enough for me. Um, but coming from a family that has suffered from diabetes throughout uh, our generations, what are some of the preventative measures that we need to take and, and enact now? Should we be? even having a conversation with you now uh, to, to help prevent those kind of scenarios. Yes, definitely you should be having the, the conversation right now. My mother, my grandmother actually was a diabetic and she had amputation and my 45 year old cousin died about a year and a half ago, wow. didn't even know she was a diabetic. Wow. Wow. And I had been trying to talk to her about her diet and her lifestyle. Mm. So I think it's three prong. We sh need to deal with our diets, our nutrition and the design of the African-American human body is what it is. I don't think the standard American diet works for us. No. So we need the low glycemic, okay. fruits and vegetables, heavy on the protein, and adequate fats. We mm. also need to get enough sleep. When we say heavy mm. on the protein, like what? It's according to weight. So there's no blanket, one size fits all recommendation for protein. I give the patients a food list and it has their protein requirement for their weight. Hmm. Okay. All right, cool. Okay.
I think like, we, I think we can make I think we can make Doc do a food. Do. Make Doc do, right. So is is it on, on there as well? Do you break it down? So uh, what your weight is? Say this is the diet you should be on. Not according to weight. I give you the general guidelines, but then Got I can it. become yeah. more specific. To the yeah. Yeah. Because food sensitivities, you may be eating food that you're sensitive to. So that's also plays into diabetes. I don't eat nothing I'm sensitive to. <laughs> you may not be aware. <laughs> we say sensitive to. Vegan buffalo yeah. wings? You got to define, you gotta define <laughs> what sensitive means. Well, people have food sensitivities that they're unaware of. Like, what, what's a food sensitivity? You could be, you, for, for, <laughs> for instance, you could be having canola oil in your diet, but canola oil doesn't work for your body, and the cells in your body are reacting to it. And I do that sort of testing in my practice. I got you. Okay. Because mm. if I don't like it and they don't smell good, I don't eat it. Mm. That, that, that's my sensitivity <laughs> right there. <laughs> All right, Doc, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Chamele, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot as well. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.